to match the stars, Bob Barker, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Arlene Francis, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly. as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Johnny Olson and friends. Thank you, thank you. Where'd you get them, John? I got them. Just keep them here, will you? Right. Day after day. Hey, listen, I thought we weren't going to use this microphone because it made a dumb noise. I shouldn't say anything. Handle it gently. You forgot yes. to give me the old... You want to give me the old microphone? You don't. All right, we'll use this microphone. Gene, you what? can't blame the mics for the dumb noises heard from this show. <laughs> How's Bob Barker? Fine, Gene. How are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. You've been working hard and the price is right. Oh, I've been slaving. I've been working so hard. Oh, you can't believe how hard. Really? really? What did she say about the railroad? She's been working on the yeah. railroad. Oh, yeah. Last time I was on the show, I wore a tuxedo. And you oh, didn't yeah. like that, so yeah. I thought I'd try this this time, you see. I see uh, you're wearing those fake jewels again. <laughs> You're carrying your magic wand. It's splendid having you on the West Coast. Isn't it splendid having yeah. Arlene on the West Coast? Yeah. 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 Right. Now, what do you say? We say to all our two players, Carol Bartos and David Olson. How are you, Carol? Great. This little lady won $5,600. That's a lot of money, and she's very happy about that. You've had a chance to think over uh, what you're going to do with your winnings. Have you made any decisions oh, yet? Oh, I am just still having sweet dreams. Oh, really? You're dreaming <laughs> about everything. Right. I want to dream about it for a while. All right. We started this game just to bring you up to date on what happened since uh, we were together last time. David Olson had his first round question and matched one of our celebrities. And your first round question will come along right after this message comes your way. We are ready. My magic finger pushes the little red button and reveal the question here for Carol. It's your first round question, Carol. And it goes like this. Tarzan say... That's Jane. That's Jane. That's Jane. Tarzan say... Tarzan say... Me old. He says, me old. Old Tarzan. He says... Hmm, me have accident swinging on vine. Oh. Hmm, so now, me wear blank. What does he have swinging on his vine? Tarzan has what swinging on the acting. Just a word. Tarzan say, hmm. <laughs> Me old, me have accident swinging on vine. Oh, oh we have accident. Well, accident. We have accident. Accident, accident. 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 swing on vine. We got they must write it at so home now. for the young. Uh, have the three of you thought of getting out of show business? <laughs> so, so now, oh, every now I So wear. now me wear blank. Ah, very well. We have accident swinging on vine. Okay, me have accident swinging on vine. So now me wear. Okay. Oh, you are impossible. Yes. <laughs> All right, everybody ready down here? And they're fitting, and everybody ready up there. Carol Bartos. Tarzan say, Me have accident, me old, me have accident swinging on vine, so now me wear. Hmm. Uh, bandage brace? Bandage brace. Brace, you know, when you get hurt. Something you just invented. Right, hmm. right. <laughs> I think the audience is trying to tell you something, Carol. <laughs> you won your $5,600. Hmm. Right. Okay. All right, she said a brace or a bandage or something like that. What do you say, Bob? A brace or a bandage? How can we start? We haven't shown the first item up for bids. No, oh, that's it. I said... Your bag, not cast. mine. A cast. A cast. Oh. All right, that's uh, not exactly a bandage or a brace. What, what do you say? But it's second worst. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, Cass I wouldn't be bad. Oh, he was so upset, and he had this little friend who lent him his dance belt. A dancer's <laughs> belt, yeah. <laughs> All right, now, that that'll... That's a good answer. Yeah, that'll keep it together, won't it, uh, Charles? He wore a truss fitted with a safety belt. A <laughs> truss fitted with a safety belt. I don't want to inquire any more into that <laughs> arrangement at all. Catalogs. All right, Arlene, let's see if, you, if you've improved since the last time you were here. <laughs> I wasn't very good. Well, what he is wearing is... I'm not going to tell you where he's wearing it. Okay, just tell us what it is. A sling. A sling. <laughs> Hey, the sling this, is that could lead to a whole that's nother. A, that's uh, a brace. Tarzan fell off the vine, and now his blank is in a sling. <laughs> uh, that'll be our next question. What do you say, Richard? <laughs> oh, what's printed on the money in the jungle? What? In Tarzan, we trust. In Tarzan, we trust. <laughs> and vice versa, I might add. <laughs> So now, no, we have no. accidents swinging on vines, so now me wear bandage or brace or whatever is what you... Uh, Tarzan, we trust. Yes. Yeah. I hate people that try to be silly. This is for Bob Barker. Trust or consequences? <laughs> trust or consequences? <laughs> oh. Okay, we go to round two, David. B. B it is. B. One to nothing to score at this moment. Richard does not participate. Everyone else does. Dumb Donald is so dumb. How dumb is he? Boy, they've been rehearsing, haven't they? He's so dumb he refused to see Jaws because he thought it was a movie about his blank. <laughs> That's how dumb he was. <laughs> I don't think too hard, Charles. I love him looking at my answer and muttering right. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> All right. Okay. Everybody's ready. <laughs> David Olson, we need a response from you. Now, dumb Donald is so dumb, David, he refused to see Jaws because he thought it was a movie about his... Mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. <laughs> Kid's pretty good over there. Yes, that's very good. Yes. Before I show my answer, I just want to remind the audience that uh, this is just a game and we're just here to have fun and it's not important whether we match or not. I said dentist. Dentist is not bad. No, no, wait a minute. Gene says it was no, not bad hold, and he has no, been here more yes. than you have. That happens to be a very good answer. Now, his is good. His is good. This happened to be one of those questions where two or three good choices. I'll tell you when to boo, okay? <laughs> Your chance may be coming up right now. <laughs> Please stand by. Hello, Brett, darling. Sweetest sweetheart, yes. David right. looks like a very good friend of mine. Yes. He's a very attractive person. Right. He's smart as a whip. Smart as a whip. Because he said mother-in-law. Mother-in-law! <laughs> Foiled again. Foiled again. Charles. Oh, dentist. Dentist. Well, he I said, want to say it. You see, uh, he's new on the show. Yes. And if you say it and show it, you get a boo. But if you know it stinks and you just turn it over <laughs> oh, that's it. quietly, then nothing yeah. goes and does no one boo. Yes, it have. They can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Until later. <laughs> okay, Arlene, we come to you. I thought he was so dumb he didn't hear very well, and he thought the word was Movie draws. about... Movie about... <laughs> About his drawers. Oh, I see. Arlene, so sorry. Hard of hearing. You're already a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, Richard matched on the first round. Dumb Donald so dumb review Steve Jaws because he thought it was a movie about his mother-in-law. Don't, don't say it. Just don't say it. Just hold it up uh, the other way. Well, this is what I wanted to do. Oh. <laughs> no, the world is too much with me. I said congressman. His congressman. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. When we get back from this commercial, Carol, you'll have to match two to stay in the game, three to win. Come back and see. Here we are, coming down the home stretch. Second and final round, Carol, you match two to tie, three to win. Old Man Periwinkle is weird. How weird is he? Oh, I'll tell you how weird he is. He took the rubber tip off his cane and he put it on his blank. <laughs> Yes. It's very 
very popular now. Right. <laughs> Old man, did you hear that, Cheryl? He think about that. Blank. Old man Periwinkle is weird. He took the rubber tip off his cane and he put it on his blank. All right. Okay. Wait a minute. Well, you haven't started yet, or have you changed your mind? I had a wonderful answer, but now I went with another wonderful answer. <laughs> okay. Well, you got two wonderful answers up there. Carol Bartos, old man Periwinkle is weird. He took the rubber tip off his cane and he put it on his blank. On his nose. On his nose. Okay. Two noses to tie, three to win. Two noses to tie, three right. to win, yeah. and here's a nose. There's one nose. Oh, the nose knows. <laughs> what the nose knows. Oh, I love to do this for you, Carol, but I hate to do it to you, Dave. And nose. That's two noses. We now have a tie. You offer the little lady a nose. Nose wins the game. What are the rest of you out here? Nose, nose, nose. Okay. She got lazy. All noses there except one. And Dave, we got to say goodbye to you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank He's you. a natty dresser, isn't he, David Olson is. We've got some gifts for you, together with our thanks for being here on Match Game 75. Goodbye, David. Now, there it is. Carol, you've been here before. You now have $5,700. You know how this do goes, so should we get right to it? Yes, yes. Okay, we polled a recent studio audience and got their best response to this. Pie blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250. If you match the bottom one, you get $100. Whom do you call on here for some help? Uh, Richard. Pie crust. Pie crust. Okay, there's one. Fanny. Fanny. Pie in the sky. Pie in the sky. A moderate <laughs> amount of applause. And one more. Britt. What about Pi Alamo? Okay. You got Pie in the Sky, Pie Alamode, and Pie Crust. Uh, pie Crust. Pie Crust, okay. It's the answer that Richard gave you. We'll find out if it's up there. And if so, where? Let's begin down at the bottom as usual and reveal the $100 response. Pie in the Face. Uh huh. It's worth two and a hand. That's true. All right, we're looking for a hunk of pie crust. Let's see if it's hiding under the two hundred and fifty dollar response. Pie crust today. Twelve hundred dollar move. Three out of four. Pie in the sky. You think it's pie in the sky, and you think it's pie all the Pie all the mold. Right, audience. Pie flight. Okay, Earl, let's see it. Pike. 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 Well, that uh, doesn't happen too often that it works out that way, that the third celebrity answer is the one that's in the highest position, but that's the way it worked that time. Now, Carol, in order to collect the $2,500, you have to match one of our celebrities exactly head-to-head. -head. Which one will it be? Brett. Okay. Ah! <laughs> 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 Did one of them... Oh. No, I guess not. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to ride, Brett? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you turn around and face me, Carol, and here we go with a $2,500 question. William Blank. William Blank. Okay, she's thought it over carefully and she's come up with her answer. And now we ask you to think about it. Give us an answer which you think will match hers. William Blank. William Tell. William Tell. <laughs> I think they got. Okay. The audience apparently thinks your answer is correct, William Tell. We'll find out right now if you do indeed match Brett. May we see it, please, for 2500 Do you, you know that, you, that William Wordsworth Longfellow comes from Portland, Maine? You know that, William Wordsworth you? Longfellow? Yes, sir. So but what? I said, oh, well, how about William Tell? Huh? Ah!
at $8,450. Okay, and while she's reveling in her newfound wealth, we'll pass along this message. Yes, we are ready to carry on now and uh, meet another player. Are you ready? Okay, then let's all welcome yeah. Debbie Shinholster. Did they lower your chair? No. No, that's you, right. All right, Debbie, we'd like to find out something about you. Wouldn't you like to find out about Debbie? Yeah. Yes, like let's find out, out about her. her age. She looks 12. No, she's older than 12. A little aren't she? older than that. You. <laughs> I live in La Grande, Oregon, and I work as a secretary, and my husband's a student at Eastern Oregon State College, and we just celebrated our first anniversary. That's nice. La Grande. La Grande. That's a pretty name. It's at the Northeast State College. Yeah. Congratulations. A very enthusiastic audience. They're very happy for you that you're married and that all, you're here and that all that. Are... Okay, are you ready to play? Sure. Okay, am. let's begin. I ask you to make a selection A or B here. I'll pick A, please. A it is. New game. Everyone participates, and it goes like this. Charles Nelson Riley said. Uh oh. He said. <laughs> when I was a kid, my family was really poor. <laughs> okay. It's a sad question. <laughs> really poor. We were so poor, me and my sister had to share one pair of blanks. <laughs> one pair of blanks? Yep. One pair of blanks. Me and my sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's before he learned to say, my sister and I had to share one pair of blanks. Me and my, my children still say me and him, me and her, me and them. Really? Me and Dick, well, me and Jim. Well, straighten them out, will you? I do, it don't do no good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make up your mind, Fanny? Is No, you haven't. Come on, Patsy, your mama's watching you and want you to hurry up. <laughs> I'm marrying. Uh, this is hard. Okay. okay. Oh, Debbie. that's not poor. Charles Nelson, you've seen the show a lot, haven't you? Mm -hmm. You know a lot about all of our celebrities, yes. including Charles Nelson Riley, who said, when I was a kid, my family was so poor, uh, me and my sister had to share one pair of blanks. Shoes. Shoes. There's so many times. Zero reaction. <laughs> A delayed, slight reaction. She says shoes. What do you say? Shoes. She I says started shoes. to say pants, meaning slacks, and right. so on. But I thought the audience might misunderstand. It's such a sensitive group. So I said shoes. Shoes. One for you, Debbie. Very good, Mom. What do you say, Brett? I don't want a lot of ugliness to ensue because of my answer. I just want the bell, and I don't want any trouble. Sneakers. Okay, that's two for Debbie. Now, Charles... What don't I ever wear? Socks. Socks! Is what you never wear. Because my sister, at the age of 21, got to keep them. Socks! Oh. The one pair of socks, and that's why oh. you never wore them. They were argyle and very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister's the one, the little old lady in argyle socks. Okay. <laughs> now, Arlene. And one for one foot and one for the other. Oh, another pair of shoes, Debbie. That's three for you. I got shoes, you got shoes, you oh, got God's shoes. Children. Bless you. <laughs> I thought you were sneezing. Debbie, I wish I had shoes for you. Me and my sister had to share one pair of blanks. Every other night, Charles goes to uh, bed in the nude. So I assumed it was he had to share jammies. Oh. Was... <laughs> Every I, other night I've, it was his turn. Yeah, I've never yeah. inquired into it. <laughs> this is the worst answer Fanny's ever given. I Fanny, saw. let's see your worst all-time answer, according to her. Well, we they screamed read at the me. Question all That's right. Through. All right, Charles Nelson Riley said, when I was a kid, my family was really poor. Me and my sister had to share one pair of... Oh, bicycles. <laughs> one pair of bicycles. Oh. 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 Well, that's the worst answer. Oh. Brett, I have to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> one pair of bicycles. Okay, so that's three for you, and that's not bad for a first-round question. They're usually more difficult, and we'll have yours in a moment or so. But right now, we got this for you. Pay attention, friends. Now, we have to leave Debbie Shinholster and Carol Bartos now until we get together next time. We're in the middle of round one. 
She's had three, and we'll see how you do with your first round question when we get together. And, uh, yes. Now, is the everyone satisfied over? and happy yeah. over here? The party is over for now. I have an announcement to make. You have an announcement? What is it? That is all Brett's hair, and she's pretty. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. her she's wearing her own hair. I am. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, that's very kind of you. You've applauded Brett's hair. Is there something that you have that we could applaud there? It's a blank. You oh. make it up. All right. <laughs> Let's applaud Arlene's blank, shall we? One of the nicest ones I've ever seen. Listen, are you visiting out here? Just for today to be with you. How nice. Oh. How are things back in the East? Cold. Oh, really? Yes. Cold. Oh, re that's right. Only he because is. the city's in trouble. How oh, is yeah. your city? Oh, fine. Just dandy. <laughs> Mine is just dandy. Now, listen, we hope you'll join us next time. For Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. to match the stars, Bob Barker, Brent Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Arlene Francis, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flyer as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Roberts. Thank you. Johnny Olson, how are you? How are they? Good. How are you? Fine. How are yes, ma'am. I'm very well. You Thank you for great. asking. Yes. Now, didn't I tell you to wear a nice, smart scarf with that and not bother with a tie with oh. your casual outfit? That shirt is very sharp with that outfit. Sorry, that Mom. Great. Dayton. Honestly. Dayton, bring the ascot out. I'll change on stage. Oh! Uh, no. Not, not everything. No. Just this the is ascot. fabulous. Garbo talks, Jolson sings, and now Gene changes right here on this stage. <laughs> Carol Bartos and Debbie Schinholster. How are you, Carol? Fine. How do you feel? Great. Have you spent the money in your head yet? Oh, I well, Listen, I got to find out about over. this. No, not when I know. So I saw the picture. Oh. She has a little locket uh, on, which she wears on her on her finger here, and it's a picture of her child inside there, and it's very attractive. But you are holding a. She has a talisman here. Can you get a close up of that, uh, Mark Breslow? Would you tell us? Yes. Huh. It's a hunk, Those of us that can't see. It's a little piece of blue paper. Well, you tell us about it, Carol. It is the corner of a card that won a lot of money for your all-time big winner, and she gave it to me for luck. Oh, oh isn't that nice? What was her name? Janet Finn. Oh, yes. She's right here. How much did she win? She won. Oh, you're the one who won 18000 Oh, yes. And it's working for her because she already has $8,450. So it is working. <laughs> Hang on to that. Okay. <laughs> now, Debbie, you've had your first round question, and you did unusually well with it. The first rounders are a little more difficult, but you did match three of our celebrities here, and your first rounder will come up in a moment and see how you do with that right after we see about this. Carol, would you hold my microphone for just a second, please? I certainly will. While I uh, just very quickly take this pin off here. And uh, 
I mean, Brett doesn't like the way I look, so what the heck? I'll, I'll just... cancel the reservations yeah. in Encino. Yes, naturally. <laughs> I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to look the way Brett wants me to look here. Oh, good. <laughs> What'd she say? Uh, she said, take it all Yes. Off. Get her number, John. <laughs> Well, I don't have a mirror. How does that, Carol? You look lovely. Thank you. Look. Is that all right, now? Well, I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. All right, shall we carry on? I will push this button, reveal your first round question, and everybody plays, and it goes like this. King Arthur said, he says, Hmm, that Sir Lancelot sure is flashy. He just bought a new suit of armor from General Motors, and it has blanks on it. <laughs> That's what King Arthur said. He says, that Sir Lancelot sure is flashy. He just bought a new suit of armor from General Motors, and it has blanks on it. Very easy one. Very easy one. Oh, it's very easy. Now just think of the ingredients. Sir Lancelot, Sir flashy, Lancelot, flashy, dresser, you know. Oh, I've they got it. They bought a suit oh, of armor from General Motors. You remember them? And it has blanks on it. We all remember General Motors. Yes. Yes, you, you got anything? the idea. Yes. No. All right. Charles, we're waiting for you. Captain Kangaroo has to take care of his animals first. Hey, listen, how come they never asked all of us? I'm just uh, stalling for time while you're uh, getting your brain to work. Oh, I That'll never say. happen. You know, we ought to do sometime. We all ought to say... Good morning, good Captain. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Cassie. Good, good morning. I say good morning. Good morning. And how come we don't, they don't ask us to do that? Isn't that on CBS? Yeah. Yeah, all right, well... They don't well, like the way you do it. Okay, we ain't going to do it. I change my hat if it's yes. going to cause all this trouble. After Would you get a little neater here? Something. You're very yeah, sloppy yeah, with, your, <laughs> with your clothing. Now, this is yours. King Arthur said, that's Sir Lancelot sure is flashy. He just bought a new suit of armor from General Motors, and it has blanks on it. I'm having a hard time with that. You one. are? Yes. You've had all this time to think about it. Now, think about the ingredients. General Motors, Sir Lancelot, a flashy dresser and all that, and it has blanks on it. Um, Before the buzzer sounds, you must say something. Push buttons. Push buttons. On the suit of armor. Wait a minute. There was one button here and one button here. That's not a bad idea. What do you say? I say that on my own show, I'm always very careful not to offend a contestant. But since this is not my show, I can say, Carol, that was a lousy answer. <laughs> my answer is tail fin. <clears throat> tail fin is a good answer. <clears throat> tail fins is excellent. But may I answer. remind you that yes. it is my prerogative as the host of this show to say it's a lousy answer. But you said it was a good answer. No, I say tail fins is a good answer. That's what I, yeah. you're a host but of good taste. But it's my prerogative to say to Carol it's a lousy answer. So you voice. butt out, Bob. Well, would you please tell Carol that was a lousy answer. That was a lousy answer, There Carol. you are. Now, what have you got here, my dear? I'm so glad Carol won all that money, aren't you? That's right. Because she's on her way. Oh, you teach. <laughs> Don't tell me, yeah. right? Lancelot was very flashy, and it was a touch of the tomboy in him. Yeah. So he just had a lot of sequins put on. Sequins. Him. All over. All Terrific. Over his yes. Suit of armor. Okay. Don't do that. General, thing. he just bought a new suit of armor from General Motors, and it has blanks on it. Well, I want another route, Gene. I want a protective route, <laughs> safety. You know what yes. I mean? I what? mean, if you're an armor, can be dangerous. Right. You know, in battle. So I chose a bumper. I know I would pick a bumper. Bumper. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> What route did you go, Arlene? Well, you said flashy, and when you say flashy, you mean lights. Headlights. Headlights is the answer. Boy, I really laid it out as far as I could for you, Carol. Headlights, uh, General I'm sorry Motors. Sorry that yeah. Brett revealed General Motors' secret for next year, bringing out a sequined car. <laughs> oh, yes. That wasn't supposed to break until next month. I said headlights. Headlights, it is. Now, did you... Uh, uh, do they expect the thing we expected of you? No. No? No, I said, spoke wire wheels. <laughs> but I misspelled it. Spock wire Spock. wheels. Spock. Dr. Spock is now yeah, making Spock. wire wheels. He stopped Spoke. writing books and all that. Uh, what is that, an E? S-B-O-K-E, -E. all right. 
So, at the end of uh, round one, we got three to nothing in favor of Debbie. And now, Debbie, we go to round two and ask you to make a selection. B, please. B. Three people participate. Charles, Richard, and Fanny. Dave no, said... No. Me, I don't write either. You don't write. Charles, Richard, and Fanny participate. Oh, pardon me. I thought you said Charles, Richard. You must listen. I do, but my hearing aid sometimes oh, conks right, out yes. on me. New battery. New battery. Technician, get a new battery for Brett there. Uh, Dave said, my blind date was really a dog. When I arrived to take her out, she met me at the door with a blank in her mouth. <laughs> Oh, I like that question. I could have snapped up an answer for that. That's an easy one, right? What? I see that point. Oh, wait a minute. You misspelled that, didn't you? <laughs> oh, no. When do you finish? Okay. All right. Uh, it's all right. Thing <laughs> Do you want to neaten that up a little and yeah, and neaten it up and do it there so, so they can read it when you hold it up? All right. Okay. Now we come to Debbie. Ready? Dave said my blind date was really a dog. When I arrived to take her out, she met me at the door with a blank in her mouth. Bone. A bone. The audience is applauding Bone. Charles, you are first. I don't bother me none. They don't? <laughs> uh, you didn't think I bone. thought of Bone. I'm sorry, dear. I thought of Bone, but we are going out. Now, yes. if you're going to call, call on her and eat something in the house, then she would have a bone. But if you're going out, she would have a leash in her mouth. The dog. A leash in her mouth. That's what dogs do. For those nine people who adore that, I'll send an individual. <laughs> <laughs> I arrived to take her out. She met me at the door with a bone in her mouth. Oh, I'll drink to that. Okay. <laughs> one bone. Why do you look so discontented? Pardon? <laughs> why do you look so disconsolate? Well, because I wrote newspaper. Oh, that's why. To see what movie they were going to. <laughs> oh, yeah, to see what movie they were going to. Right. If you're gonna listen, they was uh, all together. Give her a little boo. They, boo. <laughs> all right. We will next do uh, do um, oh something from Brahms or Mozart, uh, a cappella. Are you ready for it? Then? No. What we're gonna do next is uh, do a little commercial business, and then we're gonna see how you do. You make four to tie, five to win. Hurry right back. Here we go. Shall we carry on? Last chance, Carol. Okay. Got a match four to tie, five to win. Okay. Ralph said, My wife has figured out a new method of birth control. Just before she comes to bed, she eats blank. <laughs> Got it? Just before she comes to bed, she eats blank. Wish I'd thought of that before I had all those children. Okay, everybody's ready. Carol Bartis, Ralph said. My wife has figured out a new method of birth control. Just before she comes to bed, she eats... Garlic. Garlic, she says. <laughs> Do you eat garlic, Bob? <laughs> uh, well, that's Tell a different program. Uh, yeah, oh, it is. Uh, the answer was garlic? Garlic is the answer she gave. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, on occasion, it will work. Garlic, garlic. is the okay. answer. Okay. Four to one to score at this moment. Now, Brett. It only don't wake, dear, if you both eat garlic. Garlic. All right. Four to two to score. What do you say, Charles? That's three. Four to three to score. A clove of garlic. Well, no, garlic doesn't agree with me, so I ate onions. Onions. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. Oh. 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 There's okay. A Four to three to score at the moment. Oh, onions is for stopping kissing. Oh. oh. Not babies. Oh, I see. <laughs> garlic. Garlic will stop babies. High nice score. One more clove of garlic, Carol, and you will have increased your winnings. Now, Fanny, it's up to you. 
Hi, hon. Hello there. You know what? What? The reason I gave this answer, Brett wears a big old thing of it around her neck. Yeah. Garlic. Garlic it is. <laughs> Well, little girl, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. You are a youthful, marvelous-looking young lady, isn't she? Yeah. Debbie Schinholzer, we're delighted to have met you. We've got gifts for you. Goodbye. Okay, Carol, have another go at it now. You got $8,550. You can win over 5000 additional here, which should give you a pretty good bundle. Let's find out what happens here. We polled the recent studio audience and got their best response to this. Blank Shield, S-H-I-E-L-D. Remember, you get $500 if you match that answer, $250 for the middle, and $100 for the bottom. Whom do you call on? Richard. Windshield. Windshield. Oh. Fanny. Have you got one, Fanny? Pardon? Have you got one? Blank Shield. I'm sorry, were you speaking to me? Yes, Fanny. <laughs> you know, I, the thing that I, I think of uh, whenever I'm hurt, Blue Shield. Blue Shield. <laughs> that's, just came to me. that's the medical plan, yes, just of course. Came to me. That's two of you. Now, one more. Charles. <coughs> <coughs> They're given already. Not that one. It stinks. I have one that's worse. Silver Shield. What does that mean? That's an old series I did four years ago. I was on a horse. Perhaps you remember it. Silver Shield. Silver Shield. It was Silver terrific. Shield. I wore a scarf. Yeah. And a hat very similar to this one. Yes. You rode a white horse. You had an Indian companion, yes. right? And they changed it to a woman. And yeah. So you have Yes, a... fine. Silver Shield. I mean, it's not that a bigger word. Forget about that. <laughs> Silver Shield is Charles' contribution. Windshield from Richard and Blue Shield from Fanny. What do you want? Uh, windshield. You want Windshield. Okay. Now, we'll find out if Windshield is up there, and if so, where. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Sword and Shield. What a poetic group we have. Yes, had it is a very poetic group. Sword and Shield. It's a medieval thing. Boy, that gets thing. a big applause. Yes, it sure do. There. We are looking for a windshield. Let's see if it's under the $250 response. Blue Shield. There's Fanny's answer. All right. Last chance for the windshield. Here's the $500 number. Windshield of all. You got nine thousand and fifty. You're just fifty dollars away from breaking the ten thousand dollar mark, and now you're going to play for five thousand. If you get that, you will be well over ten thousand. Whom do you call on to match exactly here? One celebrity. Richard. Okay, Richard, you get set. Here we go. Carol is facing me, and this is it. Worth five thousand dollars. Wheat blank. That's W H E A T. Blank. Wheat blank. Okay. He's finished. Now, Carol, we ask you to come up with an answer which will match his. And how do you respond to that? Wheat. Uh, wheat germ. Wheat germ. Rather weak applause, I would say. You eat wheat germ? Uh, I will after this. <laughs> Whether it matches or not. <laughs> Whether it matches or not. You start eating wheat germ. Right. What's wheat good germ and garlic. Wheat germ and garlic, right. Good source of um, a vitamin B complex in wheat germ. Okay. That'll be $20 for the medical advice there. <laughs> All right, she says wheat germ will match it for $5,000. Uh, Richard, what do you say to that? Wheat germ for everybody. <laughs> And while she's getting it together, we'll spin this message for you. It sure is. We're ready to carry on. Are you ready to carry on? Yeah, All right, let's carry on by welcoming Sandy Pound. 
how are you? Fine. Sandy, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. I live in Morro Bay. Burbank. Morro Bay. Where? Morro Bay. I was Morro born Bay. In oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm the mother of uh, one husband and three boys and a whole lot of animals. Now, wait a minute. You're the mother of one husband. Hold on there, Sandy. You said you were the mother of one husband and three boys? Yes. You mean that? Oh, he needs a lot of mother. You have a matriarchy in your household? Yes. Oh, well, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. And I'd like to win so I could run away from home. Oh. I, all right. Well, we're going to see what we can do about that. You want A or B, Sandy? A, please. A? We'll certainly do our best. Yes. <laughs> Little lady wants to win a lot of money so she can run away from home. <laughs> One prisoner said to the other, he says, hey, see the size of that new guy in a chain gang? Oh, he's big. He's so big, he took his ball and chain and he's using it as a blank. <laughs> how big this new guy is in the chain gang. I guess we better have it again over here to these two This kids. new guy in a chain gang, he yeah. is some big. Yeah. He's, he's so big he took his ball and chain and he's using it as a blank. What do you think of that? Oh, I, I, I get big. that one. I so. mean, he is big. Uh. <laughs> oh, good. Close enough. Mm-hmm. Okay. I stepped on your mirror for good luck. <laughs> All right, now Brett's ready, so we'll come over here and call on Sandy Pound. One prisoner said to the other, he says, Hey, do you see the size of that new guy in a chain gang? He's so big he took his ball and chain, he's using it as a... Yo-yo. <laughs> as a yo-yo. What? Yo-yo. 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 I'm much too young to remember them, but my grandfather had a watch fob. A watch fob? Yes, watch indeed. Fob. That's good. All right, Brad. Don't boo, because you'll get all tuckered out. Uh, I said a ping pong ball. I don't want... I don't have no comment on Rotten. it. Rotten. Okay, we'll Charles. Go In keeping with a long line of crummy answers, <laughs> key ring. Key ring. Uh, Arlene, show us your crummy answer. <laughs> well, he was terribly feminine, even though he was big, so he wore it as a necklace. A necklace? <laughs> Simple little piece. Yes, Even Richard. more feminine than you think. Where does an earring? An earring. <laughs> he was big. Fanny? Bracelet. Bracelet is good. Oh, no, y'all was Sorry. terrific answer. Very no, terrific no, no, answer, that's Sandy. That's but that's not one match. However, we'll see how you do with your first round question. It's a little more difficult. So you hurry right back. You were just... Dandy. Yeah, <laughs> no, you were <laughs> terrific. You <laughs> no, absolutely. Watch oh, watch Tattletail. I'm not on it, but they always have good people. That's right, indeed. That follows us here on CBS over most of this station. Gene Rayburn here. Join us next time for Match Game 75. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olson speaking for Max Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Nelson Riley, Arlene Francis, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flagg as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene River. Test 
Johnny Olson. Hello, Johnny Olson. Hello, Johnny Olson. Hello, Johnny Olson. Hello, Johnny Olson. And friends. You got a good group here today, John? Yeah. Good. We got a good group up here. Nice to see all nice of your beautiful faces. Oh, well, we're so thrilled. Gee, and your lovely bodies. Yeah. Yes. Are you all ready to meet our uh, players yes. over here? Yes. Are, okay, let's welcome Carol Bartos and Sandy Pound. Yeah. Here's my this little lady has won a lot of money. She has $14,050 to her credit. <laughs> She has her little good luck talisman right here, which has brought her $14,050. And, of course, her own skills and judgment here on Match Game have also helped. And she's being challenged uh, by uh, Sandy Pound, who's had her first round question and did not match any of our celebrities. But uh, we've got a way to go yet. Your question will come along in a moment or so right after this message. We are ready to carry on. Are you ready to carry on? Okay. I carry on by pushing this red button and revealing your other first round question. Carol, that's for you. Linda is so cold. How cold is she? A little more rehearsal, John. <laughs> when she went to the computer dating service, they matched her up with a blank. Oh my God. That's how cold Linda was. Linda is so cold that when she went to the computer dating service, they matched her up with a blank. Think about that, Carol. We'll get to you in a moment or so. After all of our beloved kooks here, write their answers. All right. Ready. All right, here we go. We're calling Carol Bardas. Linda is so cold that she went to the computer dating service, they matched her up with a... Iceman. Iceman. Now, wait a minute. Why are you owing her? That's an amusing answer now. Don't you think that's amusing? I'm not looking for applause or any of that, or approbation. If you think it's amusing, laugh. If you don't, I want silence. <laughs> they don't think it's amusing. I do. I'm glad. Okay, I thought it was amusing. You thought too. it was. Thank you, sir. I thought it was. Linda's so cold. She went to computer dating service. They matched her up with an ice man. With an ice man? No. With an Eskimo. 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 It's good, but not amusing. <laughs> Brett? Well, what do you want? Do you want amusing or 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 terrific? I want amusing answers that match. Oh, okay. I have a Eskimo. A Eskimo. Not amusing, but... No, uh, but cold. But cold. <laughs> now, if they had chuxedos, they could cure. <laughs> That's Eskimo. right. Uh -huh. Three Eskimos. Carol, that would have done very well for you. Yes. Okay, Arlene, it's up to you. In Alaska, they call ice men Eskimos. Oh, they do. <laughs> so far, we have four Eskimos for you and not one ice man, but perhaps the ice man cometh Come now. Oh. Ah. Everybody in the theater here understood that. Uh, Richard, uh, you understand the Iceman cometh. I was going to say they matched her up with a good humor man. Oh, yes. So that wouldn't be very humorous, would it? No. Obviously. No, not very humorous. So what did you think of? So I said polar bear. <laughs> polar bear. Well. They had their own coat. That's right. And great little dancers. <laughs> but they don't kiss too good. Now, Fanny, we're up to you. I it's want so you to look at my Fanny. computer dating said match her up with a ice man. Oh, I'm so sorry. I said you polar bear. Now wait a minute. Oh, oh don't don't embarrass me. I'm not gonna embarrass you. It's correct. She just That's wants that for a souvenir there. That's it. It says polar bear. P O L A L. That's, I don't want to embarrass you. I are a college graduate. That's right. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, round one is completed, and here we are, folks. <laughs> Now we quickly move on to round two. Sandy? B, please. B. Everybody plays? Oh, I have a TV guide listing for you. Oh. You all read TV guide? Here's what it says for Wednesday night on oh. CBS, naturally. Cannon! Cannon is accused of police brutality <gasps> after he blanks a criminal. <laughs> Cannon is accused of police brutality after he blanks a criminal. Finished. Absolutely. Now just take a peek at it there. Good for you. Hi, hon. Hi, hon. What are you doing? I'm just checking. 
Oh, there's a, is that Mickey Mouse on the other side and Minnie on one side? And Minnie and Minnie yeah. and Mickey and Mickey and Minnie. That's Min. right. All right, Charles, you finished. Does he ever finish? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Jeffy. Sandy Pound, TV Guide listing. Wednesday night, CBS Cannon. Cannon is accused of police brutality after he blanks a criminal. Takes a bite of. What's that? Takes a bite of. Cannon takes a bite of. Do you have you ever seen Cannon? <laughs> Have you seen the movie? I can, have you seen him, really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Takes a bite of me. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, rather it charming. Funny. Yes. That's very funny. Yes. And but now, after your remark about my answer being good, but yeah. not humorous, there are many ways to be humorous with this, but I think we desperately need a match. Oh, I mean, we the certainly do. That's and right. And so I said what... I said beats a criminal. He not beats funny, a criminal. Not but, funny. But... Nothing. A, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but don't be a quitter, Bob. I think I will. Because you know you're... No, you weren't... Where's your mother? Is she My here? mother's in the green room. She oh, quit. She, she left the audience. Oh, She's I on see. her way out. Oh, well, I... It's all right. We're not going to let him quit, Mom. All right, Tilly, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to Do call you. Do you know him. that he didn't even get a boo with that answer? No, he didn't. That's well, that answer made sense, now, yes. didn't it? Oh, wait a minute. Was that no, my the answer boos. or the answer coming up? Yes. <laughs> This is, a little play this is on not words. an audience. This is a mob. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Anarchy. Uh, this is a little play on words. You know, when the kids say you're cooked, it means yeah. you're dead. Uh, so I said uh, he cooks. He cooks. He's accused of police brutality if he cooks a cook. You don't care for that? No. Well, I don't care for you. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, have you got a winner? Takes a bite of is the answer she's well, looking that's- for. that's... Crazy that answer, but this is hits is not that bad. Hits, hits is not that bad. Oh, yeah, oh, right. oh, oh, oh. Thank you so much. All right, Arlene. <laughs> I just want to say that I can't spell. What I meant was bites, but I spelt it beats. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Arlene. Uh, Cannon is accused of police brutality after he blanks a criminal. Now he's rather a rotund fellow. Quite isn't rotund. It? Fell down, if I remember, and rocked himself to sleep trying to get up. Yes. <laughs> so I would say he'd be accused of brutality if he fell on the prison. Fell on the prison. Yes. Not good. Do you remember that he's large, Sandy? Do you remember that? Bite out of the bella, that that would help him to get a little larger. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, that's how he gained all that weight. Calories, he kept biting you know. all of the uh, suspects. What do you say? I say these darling people won't boo me because each one of you could be my mother, couldn't you, sweetheart? I said, sit song. That's very good. Okay. So that puts Carol in the driver's seat again, and we'll see if she drives home one more time after we see about these messages. No, 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 stick around here. We're going to have a lot more fun. Are you ready? All right. Now we see how this game is going to end. Carol, all you need is one match to win another game. You got $14,050, and here it is. Jacques Cousteau said, he says to his wife, to his wife, he says, uh, Mon chéri, Hello, baby. Uh, tonight, uh, I want you to set the table in the bathtub. And uh, I want you to set it for three. I am bringing home a blank for dinner. <laughs> set the table in the bathtub and set it for three because I am bringing home a blank for dinner. Did it ever occur to anybody that this is going to be a Z to Z tiebreaker? Gene, as a colleague of yours, yes. what happens on your show if no one ever makes a match? I ever mean, in the history of It just goes on the... and on. They could never we cancel you. We will be very embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole show would go down the blank. <laughs> I, I think, frankly, we're in the blank right now. <laughs> If Charles does not write his answer soon, I am going to pull off his wig. <laughs> start bleeding. And then you will be the Frenchman who is mocked. <laughs> Are you ready, Charles? Charles. Charles is ready. Carol. Jacques Cousseau said to his wife, Tonight, mon chéri, I want you to set the table in the bathtub and set it for three because I am bringing home a blank for dinner. A fish. A fish. Okay. 
one fish will win the game. Well, I think, uh, we'll leave it to the judges, I may have made a match here. That but is in addition to being, possible, in, in, in spite addition of your past record. <laughs> in spite of my record. <laughs> but in addition to being my answer, I think this sums up the way things are going. Flounder. A flounder. flounder. That is the next of the Fish, fish, dog man, shot, terrific. Congratulations, there you are again. Okay. Well, Sandy, mon chéri, I am sorry, but you have to go. It was fun. It was a pleasure meeting Sandy Pound. We've got gift for her. Thank you for being with us here. Match game 75. Goodbye. Are you ready? Yes. Good. Now, you know how this game goes, Carol. You've been up here. This is your fourth time, right? Yes. We polled the recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. The blank man. The blank man. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you hook up with the middle one, you get $250. If you match the bottom one, you get $100. Three are permitted to assist. Whom do you call? Fanny? The $6 million man! $6 million man. <laughs> She's uh, in show business, isn't she? She really gives it well. Bob. 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 <laughs> Bob. Aren't you Bob? Bob. Bob? You are Bob. I am Bob. You are Bob. Well, after all, it's no wonder you called him. Do you realize we've done a show and I'm the only one who made a match on this whole panel? That's Do you right. Realize that? That's right. I don't want to say that. Say no. You what do you want to say? Thin man. The thin man. Okay, you got two. One more. Richard. The Invisible. Yay! So, and tell him I can't man. see him. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Tell him I can't see him. Okay. <laughs> Just a little invisible joke. Right, that's right. Invisible man, thin man, and six million dollar man. You want one of those? Six million dollar. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Let's... Find out where it is, indeed, if it's up there at all. May we see the $100 response? <laughs> Invisible. There's Richard's answer. That was in the third position. We are looking for the $6 million man. Here's the $250 response. <laughs> Thin, man. Thin man. So far, there's two out of three there. Last chance for the $6 million man. Here's the $500 number. So that means you got $14,650. It also means you're going to play for $5,000 now. But to collect, you got to match one of them head to head. Which one will it be? Fanny. Fanny? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Do you think better with your glasses on? Oh, yeah. Let's see, this would give her nine. Oh, hey, you wow. know what? Ira, this would be the all time winner if she gets the 5000 it would give her $19,650. Let's see if it happens. Well, if we only had money. <laughs> <laughs> Is she married or single? Blank <laughs> tie, T I E. Blank tie. <laughs> Okay, she's finished. Now, Carol, we need your answer. One you think will match Fanny's and will make you our new all-time high money winner for $19,650 total. What do you say? Bow tie. You say bow tie. Okay. Fanny, she says bow tie will match you for $5,000 additional. Hmm. Here's 
the new champ of Match Game 75 with $19,650. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's a very happy lady, Carol Bartos is. And I can't stand pressure. I can't stand pressure, she says. Listen, we'll be back in a moment or so. You hurry right back on Match Game 75. Now, we've all calmed down here after the big win, and we're ready to carry on and meet another player. Let us all graciously welcome Jan Herman. All right, Jan. Good. Want to tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Yes. Uh, I taught school for six and a half years. I taught foods, and now I sell... You taught what? Foods. Cooking. Foods. How to cook. What? How to cook. Right. Oh, Okay. And uh, I sew now at home for people and my husband's school, the cheerleaders. And I'm married, and we have a little girl, Christy, and she's 16 months old, a little doll. And we love to travel, and I'm from Lenexa, Kansas. And for, well, I didn't hear the last statement. What was that? I'm from Lenexa, Kansas. Oh, you're from Kansas. Yes, oh. and I flew out here just to be on the show, and I'm just thrilled. Well, we're thrilled to have Jan Herman here. Let's push a button, get underway. Jan, ask you to make a selection. I'd like A, please. She wants A, and she gets A. And this is the way A goes. The Godfather said... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oy vey. <laughs> no, the Godfather did not say oy vey. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> oh, when I... That was the rabbi father. No. When I was a little boy... When I was little, I was in a Boy Scout troop. All the other Boy Scouts tied rope into knots, but me, I tied blank into knots. Would you read that again? All right. Godfather said when I was little, I was in a Boy Scout troop. Yep. All the other Boy Scouts tied rope into knots, but me, I tied blank into knots. No finished, finished. No heads to you. Finished. Three are finished. Charles is He did not tie to rope. In the Nazi, Nazi time. Tied blank. He was a Boy Scout yeah. troop. He was a Boy Scout. Yeah. He was a Boy All Scout. the other Boy Scouts tied rope, but me, I tied oh, blank in the knots. All right. Okay. Uh, Tilly, your son Bob was last this <laughs> no, time. No, I think fast. I write slow. Oh, all right. Now, here we go. Jan Herman. Godfather said... When I was little, I was in a Boy Scout troop. All the other Boy Scouts tied rope in the knots, but me, I tied blank in the knots. Spaghetti? Spaghetti! Very good. Oh. Don't boo her, that's a good answer. What? Well, I probably make enemies every place, but uh, the Scout leader. That's and good. They like that, that, and yeah, I thought that do. was one of my worst. Answers. No, that was pretty good. Yeah. I think I'm beginning to understand this audience. Yeah. <laughs> You'll understand them better when they mug you in the parking lot, sweetheart. <laughs> I said, spaghetti is a terrific answer, isn't terrific. it? Terrific. I wish I'd thought of it. I said they tied other Boy Scouts because he was mean as a snake. He did. Godfather tied other Boy Scouts in a knot. I Charles? said the same thing as Bob. Scout Masters. Scout Masters. No spaghetti so far, Jan. Let's see if we get a little spaghetti out of Arlene. He tied sheets in a knot. Sheets. Okay, for a getaway. Richard. Arlene. Spaghetti. 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 I am Godfather. Good old reliable Nathan. What do you say? Forgive me, Debbie Reynolds, Scoutmaster. <laughs> Okay, so that's one for you, and yours is to come, but right now we've got this message for you. Okay, we've come to the end of the road for today, but you will return next time, and we shall look forward to seeing your smiling faces. Okay, Jan Herman and Carol Bartos, you were all splendid today. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now, I don't know why I did this, but for some reason, I did the whole show today with this hammer in my pocket. <laughs> You know, he was sitting there on the ledge on my, when I made my entrance. I said, oh, I'll pick that up. Maybe it'll, just, it'll, but Anybody it didn't. You, had <laughs> <laughs> it ne you could never work again. you can do with a hammer. What? Come here. Yes. Now, this will hurt a little. <laughs> 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 That's, 
Listen, could you use that on the prices right? Certainly. What could. time are you on now? I could use that. Who'd like to bid on the hammer, please? Yeah, sure. The lady in the front row with the gray hair. What do you bid on the hammer? How much? Higher. Yes. Yes. How about nineteen thousand dollars? It's time to say goodbye to the hammer. The doctor says it's time for your bath. Okay. <laughs> Go to the wet sheets. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Nelson Riley, Arlene Francis, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flagg as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn. Are you all quite ready? You yeah. are the Beau Brummel of the television world. <laughs> Thank you, my dear, for that. You deserve a little kiss. The Errol, the Errol Flynn of America. And for that, you deserve... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> the Warthog of Kentucky. Kiss him. No, I don't want to kiss. <laughs> you know what'll happen kiss if I kiss him. you? <laughs> Let's say hello to our two players over here, Carol Bardos and Jan Herman. we were together, this uh, little lady here made history of a sorts here on Match Game 75. She became our new all-time oh. high money winner with $19,650. Now, have you been thinking about that? I'm numb. You're I, numb? Yes. Really? Yes. What's your husband think about it? Oh, I'm oh. sure he's delighted. She really hasn't gotten over it yet that she's a new all-time high money winner here. Now, we started this uh, game last time we were together. We're in the middle of round one. Jan has had her first round question. She matched one of our celebrities. And uh, when we come back here, you'll have your chance with your first round question. Let's see how this game progresses. Come right back. There. <laughs> now, with my index finger... I will do my trick. What is that is, trick? Impales himself on it. No, I don't impale himself. <laughs> I will push this button. No, I did that. A little applause for that. Come on now. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Sometimes you ask too much. <laughs> <laughs> Try this. Oh, okay. Everybody. Fred said, New York City is in bad financial shape. Oh, I God. just saw the mayor of New York standing on the street corner selling the blank. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. Mr. Beam? That's <laughs> right. He's a very Only small funny man. Only funny Mr. Beam, don't mean a thing. I just saw the mayor of New York standing on the street corner selling the blank. I got it. How are things in New York? Not good, baby. Oh. Not good. Well, I hope they get oh, better. Oh, if New York goes, yeah. you'll all go. That's right. I have always loved New York with all its warts. It'll be my favorite place of all time. I've changed my mind. there. You've changed your mind. But there is less. No, okay. All right. Now we're all set. We'll call on Carol Barnes. Fred said, New York City is in bad financial shape. 
I just saw the mayor of New York standing on the street corner selling the... Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> you know Donna? Yes, she's getting better as she goes along. She's won how much money? $19,650. Carol, take my advice and play no backgammon with Dick Dawson. <laughs> oh, yes, None. he's a good backgammon and player. And what was her answer? Uh, Brooklyn Bridge. That's mine, too. That a boy. Brooklyn Bridge. Yes. for you, Carol. Okay. That's the old New York joke, isn't it, about the tourists who came to town and somebody sold them the Brooklyn Bridge. What do you say? Charles and I just agreed about that. He said... Did you think of that, Susan? <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. He said, neither did I. I thought the city hall. City I'm hall. Sorry. That would be a catastrophe. Oh, wait to see his answer. It's worse. Wait, if you really want to boo, wait until Charles shows his. <laughs> it's a worse story. Nothing personal, Charles. Well, things were bad. He was selling the mayor's wife. Deserve a yes, Bob. I, I think it might be worthwhile to show the viewers this cue card over here that's being held up. What cue card? Oh, no. We don't want to do that to him because he is... wrong, Roger. Yes. <laughs> he spelled Brooklyn, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N. Yes, I know that. Yes. I want you to know that boy has a it's master's. It's a Dutch word. He's Brooklyn, from the Bronx. L-Y-N. Okay. Uh, the mayor was standing on the street corner selling the Brooklyn Bridge, according to Carol Bartos. What do you say? I thought he went even farther than that. Sold the city. Sold the whole <laughs> kitten caboodle there. All right, Richard, what was the mayor selling? The Daily News. The Daily News. <laughs> Right. Yes. yes. Okay. No now, Fanny, we're up to you. Yes. Watch this. Take a deep, deep breath. Yeah. <gasps> oh, she's hyperventilating here. This is inflation. Oh, yes. <laughs> Carol, darling, I want to tell you, when I first came to New York from Alabama, I bought it. You did? For $2, the Brooklyn Bridge. There it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Round two coming up. And Jan, A or B? A. A. One person does not play, that's Richard. Everybody else does. At the cannibal wedding, they didn't have a cake. After the ceremony was over, the bride and groom ate the blank. <laughs> okay, you got it. You got it. You got it. Now we're waiting for Brett. Well, honey, I want to make sure this is right. Yes. Oh, I might run out of ink, pen, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, are we all ready? Okay. Yeah, now, all right. Get it all ready now. Get it all, all, right. now get it now all together. Have... Okay, here we go. Jan Herman. At the cannibal wedding, they didn't have a cake. After the ceremony was over, the bride and groom ate the blank. Hello, Jan, it's me. <laughs> it's all me talking to you, Jan. Okay, I'm going to say, um, the, uh... The bride and groom ate the blank. Because uh, you see, there was no cake there. <laughs> they're in a jungle, all standing around there, so where's the cake? So there's no cake, so they ate the blank. There. The preacher? The preacher. <laughs> Why did you hesitate? You didn't want to say that? I, no. There's nothing wrong with saying She said they ate the preacher. I heard her. You did I, hear that. I'm headed for Las Vegas. I am in a hot streak. The minister. The minister and the preacher. The minister. Now, Brett, what took all well, that time? Now, you see, I didn't want there to be any uh, argument over there with those people with those bloody buzzers. So I said the minister or the person who perfor performed the ceremony. <laughs> Did you make a big to-do over this one, Charles? I'm going to stick with the mayor's wife. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I said the minister. The minister. That's four for you. After the ceremony was over, the bride and groom ate the blank. She said the preacher or minister. What do you say? Nobody mentioned the rabbi, but I say the minister, too. Okay. All right. 
Richard Matcher in the first round, so you don't write? I didn't play, but I did write Minister. You did write Minister. Just as a thought. Which is the thought that counts. A, you know. Right, okay. Did, uh, let's uh, see if we transmitted the thought to Fanny Flagg. I say the bride entered from the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> the groom entered from the front porch. And the uh, bride and groom ate the wedding party. <laughs> Nine, relatives. Nine oh, relatives there. You should be ashamed. Oh, okay. absolutely well, they dreadful. were heavy people. I think I'm going to rip your pennies off your. Oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> what what price are you want? <laughs> so we're in the middle of round two. The score is five to two. When we come back from this uh, message or two, Carol Bartos, you must match three to tie, four to win. Hurry right back. See how it turns out. Middle of round two, final round coming up here, Carol. You need three to tie, four to win. Fanny does not play. Bob Barker does not play. Charles and I play. You play and you play. You play? You yeah. play. Yeah, that's right. I, play. I heard you play there. Uh, the banjo player said, After a hard day of plucking my banjo, I go to the burlesque house and there I pluck the stripper's blanks. <laughs> Sorry, you're not playing? <laughs> Tilly, you see what you're saying? He's not playing. He lays out at the right time, doesn't he? I'd like to go with a guitar player. <laughs> After a hard day oh, of plucking banjo my banjo, play. I go to the burlesque house, and there I pluck the stripper's blanks. All right, ready, ready. Ready, ready. Ready, ready. Okay, she's ready, so we'll call on Carol Bartos. The banjo player said, Carol... He said, after a hard day of plucking my banjo, I go to the burlesque house, and there I pluck the strippers' blanks. Can I ask you if I can say this? Can you ask me if you can say it? Yeah, but don't let them hear it. Say, yes, he's what? G-string? <laughs> hey, Ira. Ira? Can she say G-string? <laughs> she can say G-string? Okay. Say G-string. I couldn't hear her. What'd she say? She said G-string. Oh, G-string. Loud and clear. Can she say it? Oh, she can say oh, okay. G-string. Right. Can you say G-string? G-string, At a bar? G-string. <laughs> can you say G-string? You bet your old-fashioned uh, no, 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 no. type I, I can, can say, say G-string. G-string. Five to three. You gotta leave? She says five to three? No, that's a score, five oh, to three. It's right later than you think, Charles. Is he skippy or is he snappy? <laughs> or what is that? I don't know, but you look someone that? faintly reminiscent of some, like someone faint. Uh, who does he look like? Snooky, Harold yeah, Team. All right, show your Can answer. I ask you a question, Annie Brett? Yeah. Right. What's a G string? <laughs> it's a string with a G on it. I roll, that's what I thought. G string. Let's go and find the four now. And you got two to go. Let's see if we get a tie or a win here. Arlene, she's looking for the answer G string. I go to the burlesque house of the banjo player after work, and there I pluck the strippers G strings. If you're gonna pluck anything, pluck a G string. Okay. <laughs> now, Richard, it's entirely up to you. If you say G string, she wins another game. Good pluck. <laughs> Yes. What if I don't? If you don't, <laughs> it ends up in a tie and you get beat up by her husband afterwards. In that case, cheese string. Uh, <laughs> okay. Jan, I'm sorry to see you go. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you had a good time? Yes. Good for you, Jan Herman. We've got gifts for you. Together with our thanks. Goodbye. Now, Carol Bartos, as we begin here, you're going to try for over $5,000. You've got $19,750 now. As we begin this, I must point out to you, in all fairness, something that I guess was told to you, but you might have forgotten it. Uh, you are approaching 
the limit imposed by CBS of uh, the amount of money that any one contestant can win over a period of time, which is $25,000. But you've got a little ways to go, and let's see how far you can get to the 25000 as we uh, reveal here what uh, we polled in a recent studio audience and came up as their best response. What did it say there? Slide it, Earl. Heat blank. We got their best response to heat blank. Now, if you match uh, the answer they gave most often, you get an additional $500. If you match the second one, you get $250. And their third most frequently given response gets you $100. Whom do you call her? Fanny. Heat wave! Heat wave! (laughs) Having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. Brett. What I have eternally in the summertime, heat rash. Heat rash. (laughs) Yay! One more. Mm-hmm. Richard. Uh, what I have at home when I'm lonely. <laughs> a heat pad. Oh. <laughs> but we're very happy. In your high, you and your heating pad. I turn it up to high. Yes, you do. <laughs> and you get high together. Then. Well. That's nice. So a heat blank. You got heat pad, heat wave, heat rash. Do you want one of those or think up one of your own? Heat wave. You want the heat wave. Let's find out if we got a heat wave up there. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Heat rash. That's Brett's answer. Okay. You just thought of a good one? Heat your vegetables. Heat your vegetables. (laughs) (laughs) Looking for a heat wave. Here is a $250 response. Heat lamp. Heat lamp. Uh Uh-oh. I don't think that's such a terrific one. think that's a good omen or a bad omen? Good, good. It's a good omen. All right, last chance for Heat Wave. Here's the $500 number. It's dead. Oh, heat wave. Wow, $20,250. Now, Carol has $20,250. And now she's going to play for another $5,000. That means she would go all the way to $25,000, which is the limit, the amount she can win here. Let's find out if Carol goes all the way. Or if she's just fooling us. You're asking the wrong person. Yes. You, sir. You, You, sir. sir. (laughs) All right, Carol. To collect the additional amount of money, you have to match one of our celebrities head-to-head here exactly. Which one will it be? Richard. All right, Richard, you get ready to write. Carol will face me, and here we go. Goes like this. Roman blank. That's R-O-M-A-N blank. Roman blank. Now, Richard's finished. And Carol, you've been getting pretty good at this, and let's see if you can do it one more time here. Matching Richard, Roman blank. Numeral? Roman numeral. Are you owing her? You don't think that's it? About half of them think you're right, and about half of them think you're wrong. Carol, we're going to find out right now if you do indeed match Richard. May we see it, sir? Two were a lot. It was Roman numeral. The Roman numeral. Roman it, holiday. Roman holiday. I said Roman Empire. Roman Empire. Yeah. Yeah, that, th- there were a number of good choices there. All right, now, Carol, you're up to $20,250. You're going to meet another player in a moment after we meet these commercial messages. Now, we uh, are very happy to welcome a new player here. Let's all applaud Mr. Henry Bivacqua here. Henry, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Now, we've just got a little bit of time, and we want to play some of the game. So the next time we get together, we will talk to you about the story of your life. In the meantime, I push this button, and nothing is happening. Okay. Now, Henry, I ask you to make a selection, A or B. A. A it is. Everybody plays. Here we go. The Tidy Bowl Man said. Is he back again? Yeah, the Tidy Bowl Man. The Tidy Bowl. Man. Oh, tidy Bowl. Tidy bowl. Uh, he said, Josephine the plumber is a mean lady. Last night, Josephine blanked the water in my tank. <laughs> That's what the tidy bowl man said. Do not look at me in such a stunned way. Write something on your cards. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Tidy bowl man, man said, Josephine the plumber is a mean lady. 
Last night, Josephine blanked the water in my tank. Good. I haven't written anything yet. Yeah, yeah, I got the you're idea. just I trying what you're to write just from writing that first letter <laughs> on that card. I knew exactly what the you were doing. The old man lives next door to us. He does. He was picked up for skinny dipping. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, that's fair. I should have saved skinny that dipping. for Price is Right. Yes, that's right. I imagine. You got friends there. <laughs> Henry, are you ready? Right. The tidy bowl man said, Josephine the plumber is a mean lady. Last night, Josephine blanked the water in my tank. Flushed. Flushed the water in my tank. He said flush the water. What do you say? I said drained the drained. water in my tank. Is that a match? What? Wait a minute. You drained and flushed is not a match? No, drained yeah. empties completely. Yeah. Yes or no? Okay, there's one. Brett? What's happened to poor Ira? I don't know, but... He uh, just uh, can't uh, seem to... Well, he, poor little devil. I tried hard. to think of some genteel way to put this. Well, just hold but it up there. all I could think of was dumped out, which is... I mean, it is a match. Yes, of course. Naturally. Charles? I say any man that goes out with fanny flags never gonna be shortchanged. <laughs> <laughs> Drain. Drain. All right. Nothing. Thank right. you, Henry. Arlene, what do you say? I hate to disappoint Henry, but you said she was mean, so I thought she poisoned That's the water. That's a good answer. <laughs> okay, so you're up to three, Henry. We're up to Richard. <laughs> okay. That's four for Henry. Fanny? The first thing that happened to me when I met Richard, I became flushed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for you. Very good. Okay, now we've got this message for you, so pay attention. Hello there. <laughs> well, Are you ready? yes, no, I'm not ready, but I guess I, I've got to be ready. I guess I had to say goodbye. So glad you returned. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Join us next time for Match Game 75. Gene Raven here. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Title Tales next over most of the CBS stations. the carpet on the floor. <laughs> if I lay down, you wouldn't even know I'm in the room. How are you? Dinner, the sizzler. <laughs> it's a little rusty, isn't it? Thank you very much. Any other suit jokes or color jokes, get them out of your system now because we got some business to attend to here. Right. I right. think you look smart as Thank paint. Thank you, my dear. Let's say hello to Carol Bardos and Henry Bivacqua. <laughs> Carol is our current champion. As you well know, if you've been tuned in for a low these many days, she has won a total of $20,250. And she's being challenged by Henry Bevacqua here. 
This charming fellow did very well here, didn't he? With his first round question, didn't he? Yes, yes. He did. That's fine. Yes, yes, for him. Yes, yes three. So you got to work that out for him, haven't you? Yes. Well, we'll see where this game goes right after we see about this message for you. Okay. Oh, hey. All right, here we go. Listen. Um, yesterday, when we started this game, we were very close to the end, so we didn't get a chance to find out the life story of Henry Bevacqua. So let us all listen to that right yes. now. Henry, tell us where you're from and all that. I am from Miami, Florida. Yay! Yep. <laughs> Birmingham, Alabama. What it's are you close. yaying for? It's close. It's, it's close. close. Okay. I've got three kids and the second most beautiful granddaughter in the world. Aww. Who's the first most beautiful granddaughter? Everyone else's grandchild. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that all you want to tell us? I'm a former springboard diving champion, <gasps> pro and amateur. No kidding. Yeah. You devil. Yeah. Son of a Well, what were you champion of, Henry? New York State, Florida State. You were United New York State, State champ and yes. Florida State champ? That's right. And what was your specialty? The high board or no, the... No, 10-foot spring board. 10-foot board. And what kind of dives did you take? Oh, you name them. Really? How about that's the right. swan? Swan, that's easy. Anybody oh. can do that. Yeah. yeah. The jack knife. All right, it's so easy. Do a swan dive yourself. right here on this stage. <laughs> Gene? What? Brett, you know, she's been in many dives. She oh. has. <laughs> and that she's been with on. me. Yeah. All right, here we go. We are going to finish round one now. Carol, this is all yours. Uh, I don't write? No, uh, they, were, they got oh, mixed up back there. Testing. You were flashing the lights unnecessarily. Everybody plays in this round. <laughs> Just do what I tell you to and stop flashing the lights. <laughs> the I'm apartment. easily confused. I know. The apartment manager said to Frank, You'd better be quieter in your kitchen. Last night, you woke everybody up when you tried to shove your blank into the garbage disposal. <laughs> Is that, yes. Frank, is that Frank Sinatra? No. Are you sure? Frank, you better be quiet in your kitchen. Last night you woke everybody up when you tried to shove your blank into the garbage disposal. It could be Frank Sinatra. There's no last name. No. Apartment manager said to Frank, well, maybe, I don't know. Could it be Frank Sell? Frank, who's he? Sell. Frank. He's a dear friend oh, of, friend of ours. ours. Yeah. No Hi, much, Frank. Please. Oh, excuse me. All right. Everybody ready? Wait, wait, oh, well, wait. Then why are we waiting around here? Carol. The apartment manager said to Frank, you better be a little more quiet in your kitchen. Last night you woke everybody up when you tried to shove your blank into the garbage disposer. Wife. Wife. The little lady said wife. What do you say to that? The little lady said wife, and Bob Barker said wife. That's true. And the lovely, talented, brilliant, intelligent, scholastic, darling, adorable, pretty, lovely, <sighs> and Fanny Flagg's friend also said what? That's two for Carol. Charles? Wife is a good answer, <laughs> but a beer can would make more noise. <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. A beer can would be very noisy. Of course, a beer can can't scream. <laughs> what do you say? I say I'm embarrassed. Why? You got a rotten answer? Absolutely rotten. Well, let me just see how rotten it is. Wait a minute, let me just preview it there. Compared to beer can, it's not bad at all. Oh, it's bigger than a beer can. It is bigger than a beer can. It's bigger than a bread box. (laughs) (laughs) Show them. Stove. I'm so ashamed. You gotta make a lot of noise now, isn't it? I've got no friends. Not not if his wife were Harriet Beecher Stowe. Oh, Harriet oh, Beecher oh, Stowe. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to get Ooh, you out. Yes, you, there's no way to say that. Don't suddenly become a critic. No, yes, no, no, I'm, I'm oh, crazy. Yeah, about last night you woke everybody up when you tried to shove your blank into the garbage disposer, and she said, "Wife." And I say, "Take my wife, please." Okay, that's <laughs> two for you. That's two for her. What about you? Well, I say I'm very upset thinking about uh, a husband trying to dispose of his wife because I think the Institute of Marriage is wonderful. I've often said that I would give up my career for marriage. Cut! Often. Uh, (laughs) Wife. Wife. Okay. I'm going to go to round two. All right, Henry. A. A it is. One person plays. It's you, my you. dear. Oh. oh, I feel so alone. Yeah, no, I'll hang around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kiss a lot and okay. forget the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a bicentennial question for you. Yes, sir. Two hundred years ago today. Yes. 
George, George Washington, Washington married, married Martha. Martha. Right. Martha discovers that not, not only are George Washington's teeth made of wood, but but, <laughs> but I say you are all ahead of me. <laughs> Wait for Uncle Gene to finish the sentence. <laughs> yes, sir. But his blank is made of wood, too. Oh. <laughs> That's the way it was 200 years ago today, and remember, you were there. I don't want to be the only one to answer that question. You've got to be the only one. Because he's got five, and you're the only one that didn't match him in the first round. And Jean, just to think, she used to work for a profit-making organization. That's right. Does anybody want to help me? No. Ah. <laughs> you're on your own. I am alone. You're you are going alone. To Canada Would you read morning. that question again? She'll have to go to Canada in the morning. <laughs> 200 years ago today... His teeth were made of wood. Uh, not, only, not only are George Washington's teeth made of wood, but his blank is made of wood, too. Good luck. <laughs> The lady has written an answer That I'm ashamed of even for George Washington Put it in the slot and Pardon shut me up. again? Oh <laughs> Okay, Henry You want me to do the whole thing? No No oh. uh, What kind of talk is that, Henry? You tell him, Henry Henry, join me uh, no, Why, not only a apart? George Washington's teeth made of wood, but his blank is made of wood, too. What do you say? Head. Head. Head? You say head? All together now, wait a minute. Ooh. Cut. All right. What are you doing? Henry, come with me. <laughs> I have a little something for you. Come over here, Henry. <laughs> come here, Henry. Wait a minute. Henry. <laughs> there. Now hold everything. Do you remember what these mean people did yeah, to Henry when he said Henry? All, 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 all together. All together. You didn't know the audience. Boo that audience. Fire! All right. Now, listen, we've got to do your question. You're going to have to match two just to achieve a tie. We'll see what happens right after we uh, do this bit of business, whatever it is. Pay attention. Ready? Here it is, Carol. Okay. Listen carefully now. You need two to tie. That's his... Well, Who's Arlene writing? plays Carol. and Charles. Charles I and don't play. Arlene. So I shall stand between you so that both of you Arlene will be able to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Private Jones was court-martialed when they caught him blanking in the colonel's foxhole. <laughs> Private Jones was court-martialed when they caught him blanking in the colonel's foxhole. Private Jones was court-martialed. And they caught him blanking in the colonel's foxhole. <laughs> Who's doing it with me? Charles. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's Charles. I was just Charles trying to figure slide. out what he was writing there, but I couldn't read upside down in that case. All right, Carol Bartos. Private Jones was court-martialed. When they caught him blanking in the colonel's foxhole. Wedding. Wedding. That's W-E-T-T-I-N-G. Right. Wedding. All right, Charles. Got to match both of them now, Carol, remember? And if you don't, it's the end of the you line. You forgot something. She has that magic piece of blue paper there. She does. Indeed, she does. So she naturally, she will get making a non-military wet. Amen. <laughs> Score is now six to five. Arlene, it's all up to you. I am more refined than he is. Oh, really? No, I wouldn't say doubted. wet. What would I you say? I said tinkling. Tinkling! High score! So, 
Now with a tie score, what we have to do is start all over again. We'll just erase all of this stuff here and push this button and come to one tie-breaking question for each of you. The one who scores the most will be the winner. Henry, may we have your selection? A. A it is. Here we go. Tiebreaker. When Elsie the cow got married, she didn't throw a bouquet. She threw the blank. <laughs> When Elsie the cow got married, married. She, she didn't, didn't throw a bouquet, she threw the blank. Honey, I have got the answer for this. Because I used to live in the country. Lucky charm she carried. What is that lucky charm she carries? It's a little piece of paper. She should start marketing those, you know that? That's right, that's, that's coming through a those. terrific talisman, isn't it? It is indeed. All right, let me see now. This light is not on. And, all right. Come along. Ready now? Here we go. Henry, when Elsie the cow got married, she didn't throw a bouquet. She threw the blank. Bull. The bull. Henry is very alert and uh, came up with a splendid answer, Bob. Henry's answer is splendid, and I'm sorry I didn't match him. I said milk stew. Oh! You know, history of bad answers, that's the worst you've given. <laughs> that's the worst. Where did you I'm see her? You mean hers? I was going to say cow flat, but a lot of people don't know what that means. Well, right. All us yeah. country kids know, don't yeah. we? Yes, yeah. yeah, of course. But I said the bull. The bull! One for Henry. Go. Did Elsie throw the bull? I said a stupid, boring answer. I said she threw the pail. Oh, another dummy. Now, Arlene, we come to you. She didn't throw a bouquet. She threw the bull, according to Henry. I don't know how she threw this, as a matter of fact, but it just occurred to me suddenly that she threw the udder. No. <laughs> Go to your room. You can't throw those, right? No, you can't. They're attached. Okay. <laughs> And it would sting something fierce. <laughs> Richard? I think you can turn them, can't you? Isn't it biblical saying? Turn the utter cheek. Uh, yeah. <laughs> turn the utter utter. <laughs> Ball! That's two for Henry. Fanny? I say Farmer John's hands were freezing. Bucket. Bucket. So that's two for you, Henry. Now, Carol, two to tie, three to win. That's the way it is. At the Royal Bank. Oh, you don't want to do this now. You want to do a commercial? You want to, you want to do a commercial. He wants to do a commercial, but he doesn't. Let's see. Are you ready? Okay, here's a commercial. Where have you been? Now, we are in the second half of the tiebreaker here. Henry scored two with his. That means you need two to tie, three to win. At the Royal Banquet. The king said, I don't think the roast pig was cooked long enough. It's blanking. <laughs> At the royal banquet, the king said, I don't think the roast pig was cooked long enough. It's blanking. That's the first thing to do is pick up the pen. Okay, good. And then you put it right in the slot. Hello. I'm already the same. All right, everybody. Wait a minute. Ready? You changing your mind or just a, have a little addendum I, I, there? Wait a minute, darling. Oh. Come on, Brad. Well, I am, honey. Now don't cry. I'll just burst into tears. I'm so tuckered out as it is. <laughs> All right, Carol. At the royal banquet, the king said, I don't think the roast pig was cooked long enough. It's blanking. Oinking? Oinking! <laughs> you hear that pig oinking on the spit? I heard that, and I have uh, no place to go but up after yes. a milk stool, right? right? Okay. Will you buy oinking? Oinking! I'm so proud. <laughs> One more oink and you get a tie. Brett? No. Nah. Okay, Bob Barker gets to tear up my answer. I said it's giving birth. That's the worst. <laughs> I don't know what come over me. Yeah. Charles? I said breathing. Breathing. 
Yeah. Would you tear his up too, Bob? That's the second word. That's, that's <laughs> a, that's <laughs> now, now we come to Arlene. She's looking for an oinking pig, Arlene. I think an oinking pig is winking. A winking pig. <laughs> so far, can't get another oink out of this bunch, Carol. Richard, you give this girl an oink. Well, another word for oink with a pig is squealing. That's oink. Really? Well, that's news to me, but that's yes, the way it is. Okay. Fanny, it's up to you. Oink, squeal. Squeal. Henry, it was a pleasure meeting you. A lot of fun. You're a splendid fellow, Henry Bevacqua. We've got some gifts for you together with our thanks for being here on Match Game 75. Goodbye. Now, Carol Bardos, there it is. We must stop meeting like this. We polled a recent studio audience, Carol. We got their best response to this. Blank market. I remember the top answer is worth $500, $250, and $100. Whom do you call it? Brett. Brett, what, what about do you say? supermarket? Supermarket is what? Richard. Richard. Farmer's market. Farmer's market, right next door to CBS here. Fanny. And Fanny. Oh, black market. Black market. So you got those three black market, farmer's market and supermarket. Do you want one of those? Super. Super is the one she's looking for. Let's find out if it's up there and it's so well. Yes, yes, yes. We will now reveal for all to see the $100 response. Farmer's Farmer's Market market. is the one that Richard gave you. Looking for supermarket, let's take a look at the $250 response. Stock Market. Very good answer. I I didn't even think of that one. Last chance for supermarket. Here's the $500 response. Supermarket. Okay. Now. You're going to play not exactly for 10 times 5, but since CBS has a limitation of $25,000 to any one player, you will be playing for $4,150, which will give you an even $25,000. But to collect, you've got to match one of them head to head. Brett. Brett, get ready to write. Here we no, go. No, I get so With nervous. the $4,150.47 question there. Blank, Matt, M A T. Blank Matt, M A T. Just put it in the slot when you're finished and do it quickly. Oh, talk about flop sway. All right, for $4,150. Now, Carol, how do you fill in that blank Matt? Doormat. Doormat. All right, Brett, let's see it. She says doormat will match you. Oh, boy, am I mad. I said bath mat. I was bath sure mat. Be bath. All said bath mat. You all said bath mat. mat. She bad. said bath mat. Welcome, bad. Matt. Okay. We all said bath mat. All right, Carol, you're up to $20,850, oh, and no, you're still the champ. But now, let's take a look at this message. Well, there's been a lot of excitement here with our new all-time high money winner of over $20,000. Did I win that much? No, you didn't. That sweet little Carol, uh, Carlos, uh, uh, Carol, whatever her name is, who's been here for three months. You'd think you'd know it by now. Listen, next time we get together, some of these people will come back and some will not. But these are the ones who will be here. Sheldon Leonard, (laughs) Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Louisa Moritz, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flagg. Team Labor and join us next time. Match Game 75. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson, Bill Topman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of the CBS stations.
Against the Stars, Bob Barker, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Arlene Francis, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flagg as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Ryder. Shall we sell out, Johnny? Shall we sell all our shares in the... No. No, uh, how are you? You've got a good bunch here, and you got a good bunch out there, and you got a good bunch here. here. How's the bunch tonight? Oh, I haven't looked lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be none of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anything no. I can do for anybody here? No. Do you have any raid? <laughs> any raid? <laughs> To that sweet lady, would you? What would you like to say hello to our two players over yes, here? Verna Jones and Greg Fox. Sir. Now, we'd like to find out a little something about each of you. Greg, we'll begin with you. Please tell us the story of your life in eight seconds. Ready? Go. Well, I'll be married eight years, uh, five years this December. Uh, <laughs> All right, Greg, now make up your mind. Like it seems eight. like eight. Are you really married, Greg? Yes, I'm really married. You really are married? Positive. And how many years have you been married? Five this December. Five this December. Okay, right. continue. We have a beautiful adopted daughter, Nicole Elizabeth, nine months old. That's a marvelous I'm idea. I'm a junior high school physical education teacher, yeah. and I also coach football at a high school, and that's why my voice is gone this week. Well, you've been hollering a lot. A little bit. Yes. Do you, uh, don't you have a, a, one of those bullhorns so you can talk to the uh, players on the field without hollering that much? And it's built in. It is? Yes. All right. All right, Greg, we wish you the best of luck. Nice to have you here. Now, Verna Jones. Okay. Where are you from? From British Honduras. From what? British Honduras. From the British Honduras? Yes. That's the first time we've had one of those, isn't it? That's there? true. <laughs> right. Not a moment too soon. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, Verna, what else? Okay, I work as a dental assistant in a children's dental office, and like I said, I'm from British Honduras. My husband is also from British Honduras. And we've got a cute little six-year-old boy named Sean and an old English sheepdog named Cotton. Hmm, okay. And you have lovely teeth. Thank you. I brush a lot. And you get rid of the, you get rid of the plaque on your I teeth. I sure you, do, she, yes. She has her plaque under control in her mouth. That's, that's a terrible thing that causes caries, right? Yes. Or cavities, as we say. What is this, a Pepsodent say. commercial? Yes, no, it isn't. All right, are you both ready to play there? I want to remind you that you're going to try to match as many of our celebrities as you can, and the winner goes on to play the Big Money Super Match, which can pay off over $10,000. All right. Yahoo! Greg, we'll ask you to make the selection here. Do you want A or B? B, please. B it is. Here we go, folks. Kojak said. <laughs> he said. Hey, so you won't believe this, baby, but when I put on my wig, I look like blank. <laughs> Kojak said that. Kojak said. Hey, when I put on my wig, I look like blank. Oh, there is so many choices. Yes. Well, the first oh, round questions are like that. There are a number of good choices. We narrow it down a little bit later. Okay. Are you finished? Bob? No, I yeah. have finished. I you have, have finished. finished. Okay, all the lights are uh, on up there. And we're waiting for Fanny. Just put it in the slot there and away we go. We come to Greg Fox. Kojak said, you won't believe this, baby, but when I put on my wig, I look like blank. Rock Hudson. Rock Hudson, he says. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. He's a, he's a teacher and a coach and a father who's been married five or eight years, depending on... <laughs> and a terrific yellow. You're I ashamed of... Brett. What? Oh, Brett. Thinking of movie stars, weren't you? I, that really surprised me. That that never crossed my mind. Was well, the only thing that crossed my mind. Really? I wear my own hair 
now. That's that's right. She doesn't her. wear the wigs anymore. I, they worked on it for two hours before yes. the show. I watched. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was going to say Gina Lola Brigida, but I realized that she was Italian, and so that and he's Greek, right? Yes. So I said Paul Newman. I'm Paul sorry. Paul Newman, a beautiful human being. Yes. Cute as a don't knock Paul Newman on it. Paul Newman ain't bad. Kojak was just funding a leaves kidding around there a little bit. <laughs> Charles. I love Charles. Well, it was so many answers. I just said he, I look like hell. <laughs> Kojak said, you won't believe this, baby, but when I put on my wig, I look like Rock Hudson, according to Greg Fox. What, according to Arlene Francis? I mean no offense to Rock Hudson, but I said a woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving right along, Richard. <laughs> as fast as possible. Yes. When uh, Telly pops that old wig on, yeah. he looks like Cher. Cher! Oh, there it is. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No Rock Hudson so far, Greg. Let's see if we get a Rock Hudson out of Fanny. Uh, no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, I'll start all over. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we get a Fanny out of Rock Hudson. Mm -hmm. out no, we're, we said Rock Hudson, Paul Newman, in the same family, Richard Dawson. Oh. Oh. oh, all the beautiful people mentioned in one breath there. <laughs> now, Verna Jones, your first round question reads as follows. Listen carefully. Mrs. Perkins said... Um, out at the home, we don't have a TV set. <laughs> so for entertainment, we all get together in the parlor uh -oh. and we watch Old Man Periwinkle try to blank. <laughs> That's what we do. Time. Do it again. So I like a, Mrs. Perkins. Form a big circle, see? <laughs> oh, form this big circle. We stand around there, watch old man Periwinkle try to blank. That's, We're at the home, right? At the home, yes. Okay, I got it. Don't have a TV set there, you see? It's the way it is. I got it, dear. I, uh, young, <laughs> you're not a bad These looking. These windows are closed. You're not a bad looking young man. You know that. Thank you. <laughs> He's not hmm. young. <laughs> He's not young. He looks young to me, honey. <laughs> I like Mrs. Perkins. <laughs> oh, did you do that? I hope. No what? Your hamburger. <laughs> Everybody ready to lower chair? Everybody ready to upper right, chair? Right, we come right, to right. Verna Jones. <clears throat> Mrs. Perkins says. <laughs> Uh, she's cute, isn't she? Thank you. Out of the home, we don't have a TCF team. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get the aura fix. Out, uh, <laughs> out of the home, we don't have a TV set. So for entertainment, what we do is, you see, we form this big circle. Everybody stands around, and we watch old man Periwinkle try to blank. To strip. To strip. <laughs> What, what did she say? She says, watch old man Periwinkle try to strip. That means take it off. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know whether he was trying to take it off or whether he already had it off, but Mr. Periwinkle now is a... Uh, he's in the home, is he's he not? One he's one of us, he's yes. One of, well, not exactly well, one of us. Well, they watched Mr. Periwinkle try to get up. <laughs> get up. Stand up. Well... It's difficult. You know how it is once you're sitting down in those comfortable chairs. No, I'm a young person. Oh. <laughs> I can snap right up there. Uh. <laughs> I said he tried to make one of the inmates. <laughs> <laughs> he was just patting her and all that stuff. Okay. I went along with Robert. I said stand up. Stand up. So we don't have Verna Jones' answer yet, which is strip. For entertainment, we all get together in the parlor, watch old man Perry Wilco try to strip. What do you say? I say that while he was doing it, he danced a little. Yes, that's the upside down dance. There that's is the right the side he did up it. dance he on his head. He was very old. That's Danced no, on his hair. Try it. We're looking for a stripper, Richard. Waltz and Matilda. An yeah, Australian Waltz and dance. Matilda. No. <laughs> no, they all stood around and watched the old hamburger Periwinkle. Yes? Tried to walk. Oh. 
Difficult. What do you say there? I say under the B, three. Uh, <laughs> no, I say they all tried to watch him breathe. <laughs> okay. That's way it goes. So, as any fool can plainly see, <laughs> zip to zip, here it is. We're gonna go out of business unless you get hot here. When you're hot, you're hot. Well, you're gonna get hot right after these messages. Come back. We're ready to carry on. <sighs> All right, we finished round one. Neither of our contestants has matched any of our celebrities, so we'll push this button, go to round two, and I wanna point out to you, in the interim, while you were gone, his microphone got sick, and we called the ambulance and took it away, and they're repairing it now. And in case it doesn't get back, I will just, see, that's why I have this long, telescopic microphone here, so I can say, Greg, make your selection. Right. <laughs> right. Right. No, it's A or B, Greg. A or B. Uh, a or B, noise. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, I got so engrossed in telling you about his sick microphone, I forgot that he went first last time. <laughs> and uh, since the score is tied, zip to zip here, pitcher's duel, she goes first this time. And you have a working microphone there, so we ask you A or B. I'll go with B. B, thank you for straightening me out, Greg. <laughs> They're fired. The mummy said, the mummy said, the guy who wrapped me did a lousy job. He left my blank sticking out. Okay. Vern is thinking about that. Good. Okay, these two are finished. Charles is ready. Good. I'm almost ready. Is Fanny ready? All right. No, no, no. I trust you implicitly. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Verna. Things are going beautifully so far. <laughs> the mummy said, the guy who wrapped me did a lousy job. He left my blank sticking out. He left my fanny sticking out. You said that? Yes. Okay. What did she say? Did she, say? she said, he left my fanny sticking out. I That's what she said. Know him. Fanny yeah, was you didn't even know him. What'd you say, Bob? I said, back to the rest home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, was working in a little uh, higher area. I said, nose. Nose is very out. good. That's a good response. Oh. Hers is not bad. I nose is okay. Thank the <laughs> multitude who applauded that. Yeah. Eight people agreed with you. That ain't bad. No. What do and you say? And they were on the right, those eight people. Yeah. Way over there. Now, in the middle, we're going to have a large burst of applause because I said nether region. Nether region, which is a match. That's one for Verna. The nether, nether region. region. The nether region of a person's body is away yes. from their nose. Right, Charles. Thank you so much, Dr. Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue for a boring answer. Tongue for a boring answer. All right, so we've had... One match so far, Verna Jones is looking for the guy who brought me did a lousy job. He left my fanny sticking out, according to her. What according to you, Arlene? Well, I have ESP for British Honduras, and I said fanny. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Two for Verna. Ricardo. I was always uh, told to keep my nose out of other people's business. Oh, I see. So oh, that's right. right. Brilliant answer. Okay, Thank you. nose is brilliant, isn't yeah. it? Yes, of course. Now, fanny. She's looking for Fanny. I know she is. God bless her. I said nose on oh. oh. I was okay. a whack. So that's two for you. And now, Greg, we've come to your second round question. You must match two to tie, three to win. Okay. The health inspector said. What? He said, now this is the health inspector. He said, boy, is that restaurant filthy. It's so filthy, not even the blanks will eat there. <laughs> Filthy. Is that restaurant filthy? It's so, so filthy, filthy, not, not even, even the, the blanks, blanks will eat there. there. Right. Oh, there are two terrific choices. I can't make up my mind. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's very That's good. That's good. Very good. Okay. Right. 
Just checking up on everybody here. Okay. Now we come over here to Greg. The health inspector said, boy, is that restaurant filthy. It's so filthy, not even the blanks will eat there. Oh, you need the mic. Oh, I, thank you, Greg. I don't know how I'd do the show without you. Cockroaches. They don't say cockroaches, they're gonna get lynched, aren't they? Okay, Bob. Okay, well, as say a man, cockroaches. As a man who just had his home fumigated, I was tempted to say termites, but I knew they'd boo. Instead, I said ants. You said ants. Ants. <laughs> One more outburst and the marshals will clear the courtroom. <laughs> now, Brett. What did I say? What did you say? I said there were two terrific choices, correct? Yes. Cockroaches was one. I narrowed it down, and I said roaches as Roaches! In... That's one for Greg. Charles. I wish I'd have said cockroaches because I didn't know if you came from New York. Eastern play. Western, we don't have cockroaches. Oh, yes, we do. Not really. Really? I've seen them in your kitchen. Now, you're not from here, either. <laughs> Isn't that true? They're not so, uh, whatever that word Are is. Are they prevalent, prevalent here? Prevalent. No. All right, so I thought he might know that. So all I can say is rats. Rats. Okay. The health inspector said, boy, is that restaurant filthy? It's so filthy, not even the blanks will eat here. And cockroaches is the answer he's looking for. I come from the east. Roaches. High score. Now, Richard. Do you break the tie? I'll tell you how filthy it was. How filthy was it? Not even the owners would eat Not that. even the owners would eat that. <laughs> Fanny, do you untie the score? I've never seen one, except you... Brett and I went out to dinner once and she opened her little purse and one ran right up on the table. It was a cockroach. Cockroach. Come on down, Brett. Congratulations. You stand by for a moment. Verna. It was a it's pleasure nice. meeting you. Same here. You're a dear, sweet lady. We've got some gifts for you together with our thanks for being on Match Game PM. Verna Jones, while we're spinning her out, we'll spin these messages for you. Well, here we go. It's time now for the Big Money Super Match, Greg, where you can win over $10,000. Now, to do that, we've got two audience matches for you, and whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10. Now, to uh, let's get right to it here. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Wedding blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the middle one, you get $250, and the bottom one gets you $100. Three of our celebrities are permitted to assist. Whom do you call on? Uh, Richard. Wedding cake. Wedding cake. There's one. Uh, Fanny. I have it. What? <laughs> wedding dress. Dress. There's a wedding dress. Got a wedding cake and a wedding dress. So? And Brent. Oh, there are so many choices. I can't decide which Say one. Say one. Shotgun. I, well, I, I, no. <laughs> wedding. What about wedding bells? Wedding bells. <laughs> so you got bells, cake, and dress. I'll go with uh, Brent and bells. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I hope you're right. All Sorry. right. All right, he's going to go with Brent's answer and say wedding bells. Oh. Let's see if you get down at the bottom here and see if wedding bells is under the $100 response. Wedding oh. night. Oh. Nobody thought of that. It's been so long. Looking for with wedding me, bells. Never was. Here's the $250 response. Wedding oh, ring. My so far, we're striking out here. Oh, Last chance for wedding it. bells. Slide it, Earl. Wedding oh. bells. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations, Greg. You've won the $500, which means that the least you'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. Now let's see how much more you can win with our second audience match. Are you ready, Earl? I'm ready. He's ready. All right, we polled another audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank the Lion. All right, whom do you call on here? Richard. Leo. Leo the Lion. The lion. Arlene? Arlene, have you got one? The Lamb. 
Lamb. The lamb and the lion. They laid down together. You remember your yes, Bible, right, of course. Okay. Right. And bread again. Uh, uh, how about Androcles and the lion? Androcles and the lion. Okay, so you got well, Androcles and the lion, the lamb and the lion, and Leo kids. the lion. Uh, Leo the lion. Leo the lion's the one you want. Let's see if Leo the lion is hiding under the $100 response. Clarence the lion. I didn't get that. Clarence, now you remember her. All right, let's see if Leo the lion is under the $250 response. The wind and the lion. Rare intellectual group we had here that day. Last chance for uh, Leo the lion. Here's the $500 response. $500, we multiply that by 10, makes 5,000, add that to the other 5,000. He's shooting for a pot of $10,000. Now to collect that, you gotta match one celebrity head to head exactly. Which one will it be? Richard. All right, Richard, you get ready to write, and Greg, you face me. Here is the $10,000 question. Up and blank. Up and blank. <laughs> <laughs> Up and blank. Okay, he's finished. Now, Greg Fox, we need an answer from you which you think will match his. What do you say to that? Up and down. Yeah. Up and down? Yeah. Up and down. All right. He says up and down will match you, Richard. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought of the song Up, Up and Down. Yeah. Up and down. Everybody I know. Your wife, your wife, friends, everybody. All there. All right, they're screaming and hollering for Greg Fox. He's got $11,000. Congratulations to you. We'll be back with Greg in a moment or so. <laughs> you were all splendid. Gene Mayburn here. Join us next time for Match Game PM. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive the new 22-volume World Book Encyclopedia, including Research Guide and Index Volume, World Book is easy to use, easy to read, and easy to understand. And Papermate pens, the only pens with the ink pump to let you write at any angle, the perfect gift, Papermate. A new pulsating water massage from Polonex featuring four shower heads in one, lets you dial how you want to feel, installs easily. And Haynes Quality Blend Underwear of Cotton and Polyester offer all day, all over comfort, washing after washing, wear after wear. And for a smooth running car, Castrol GPX motor oil for all models and sizes of cars, Castrol lubrication for cars, motorcycles, and snowmobiles. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Thank <laughs> you.